the the two areas were the Civil Works Division, the Corps of Engineers, and at the time we had the Panama Canal, and so I reported directly to the president on that, and was greatly involved in the <coughs> restart of the uh, the um, at the time. Let me back up a little bit. The Panama Canal was American owned. There was the start of discussions when I was secretary for a treaty to transform the Panama Canal to the country of Panama. Well, the um, Secretary of the Army has direct responsibility to the President for the Panama Canal. So <clears throat> since the um, negotiations for a treaty started when I was Secretary, I made myself ha head of the Panama Canal Company, which was running the canal. And we went down there several times, and there was something known as the Panama Canal Zone. And in the ugly American fashion, we kept Panamanians out of that. So I went and had the military head uh, give a party for the Panamanian leadership. Okay. And um, the negotiations broke down, and I went to Contadora Island, which is an island uh, there, with General Torrios, who ran the, and we negotiated the beginning of the the uh, treaty that finally got passed by the Congress, where I got from him that we would be able to guarantee the neutrality of the canal after the year 2000, when it transferred fully to the Panamanians. So then uh, the um, negotiations restarted. And I had hands in various parts of it. And I used to brief the Senate with President Carter. And I actually took some trips with members of the Senate in my Army <coughs> Secretary's capacity to their home states and would get a chance to, to lobby them for what ended up being a very close vote. But we got the Panama Canal Treaty. At the time that we were doing this, the Panama Canal we were paying them $289,000 for 50 miles long and 10 miles wide because the canal went through their locks on either side. And then there's Gatun Lake and all the other waters. And that much of their land we were paying that for. At the time of the treaty, we uh, two-thirds of the people were Panamanian who were working on the canal anyway. Yes. And we negotiated a transformation so that the Panamanian head was there at a certain point, and then there was full transformation. From the point of view of the self-interest of the United States, if we had not have done that, the greatest lack of security for the canal would have been an unhappy Panamanian country, because all you had to do was drop a shoe in the lock of a canal if you wanted to screw things <laughs> up. So it came to the country that it rightfully should come, should come to, and you know the rest is history. It's continued yes. and continued quite well. But the animus was extraordinary, and much of it from uh, people who were Americans working in the zone, who reported back to their senators because they wanted to keep there these beautiful houses and they had privileges that few civilians had, and they didn't want anything to change that. Well, they kept their houses for a while, and you know all those things took place. But the main thing was the canal got changed, and I went with Torrijos up to his country estate and tried to learn a little Spanish, which I'm still trying to learn. So I, uh, all I remember was Embajado America, and I uh, remember that much. But uh, <clears throat> we had uh, a relative simpatico, and uh, I had something to give, i.e. the canal. That's and right. What a wonderful accomplishment. The other thing was uh, he had something to give, and that is that he negotiated again. 